Hello lads and ladies and welcome to this and welcome back for another video on the channel. Today we are back for some more Skybet League One content. It really is shaping up nicely for the brand new 2023-2024 League One campaign. Transfers are happening. Big transfers are happening. We're seeing low knees coming through the doors. We're seeing big pulls. You know, at clubs like Portsmouth making their move, Derby County making the move, but also the new boys, Stevenage, Carlisle, adding to their squads as well. And so much is happening. Today, we'll be doing a quick over brief of what I believe should be every team's aim next season. Of course, every team would love to be winning the league. Every team would love to be getting into the playoffs. But these are realistic games, considering last season, how they did, the manager, any situation going on at the football club, if they're having any, any trouble or if they, you know, go for a good stage of being, you know, looked after nicely, good ownership, good management, and they could really push on um, this season coming. Also having a look at their transfer recruitment as well. So we try to be realistic. Um, these aren't reflected in my table predictions. Um, that'll be coming very, very soon. But if you could like this video, that'd be massively appreciated. It does help more than you will know. Let's get on with this video. Starting off with Barnsley, it is the top six because Barnsley got there last season. Look, if they can be in and around the top six, the top ten area all season, I think it's a good season for them. Obviously, losing Mads Anderson, losing Duff, obviously a couple of issues with the ownership over the summer. There is rumour about a points deduction or a heavy fine. Hopefully, it's just the fine instead of the points deduction because we don't want to see them go the same way as Wigan have done and Reading did last season and... You know, so on. It's not really um, the, the best for the football club or the fans. Um, but Barnsley have still got a good squad. They've kept Luca Canell on a long-term deal as well. They've got some good players. And they've started to recruit a few as well. So Barnsley, top six. Blackpool are next. They came down last season and they were poor, really. It was a poor championship squad, but a decent League One squad. And they've recruited very well, to be fair. We all knew Jerry Yates was leaving the football club. But to get Kyle Joseph and a lump fee of money with one year left on his contract, he's a smart business by Neil Critchley's side. Um, uh, Ollie Norburn's coming to the side. I think he's a very good player. He was excellent at... Um, Shrewsbury and excellent at Peterborough um, as well. They've obviously brought Pennington in from Shrewsbury as well. They haven't brought stars in, but they've brought gems in as well, which I really like from Blackpool. So, good little bit of business. I do think they're probably three or four short, but there's still loads of time until the season happens. And Blackpool will get stronger as the season goes on, I, I think. Bolton, again, top six again. They finished their last season Obviously, they've lost Connor Bradley and James Trafford due to no fault of their own. But that's not going to do them any harm at all. Because, let's be honest, if they, if they go in for one of the better loan players from these Premier League clubs, they're going to trust Ian Everett. They're going to trust Bolton Wanderers because you'll see what Trafford's gone and done. He will be playing in the Premier League next season with Burnley. He'll be on big lump fee of money. He's just, you know, basically won the England under-21s, you know... A competition due to his penalty save. So it is unbelievable. So Bolton are in my top six. I do think they will challenge next season. Bristol Rovers now, they finished 17th last season. Um, they were up and down Bristol Rovers. They'd kind of be great for six games and poor for six games. Now, if they can pack that in a little bit, I reckon top 12 should be their aim next season. I think if Joey Barton wants to say what he, you know, he says a lot of stuff, Joey Barton, he needs to go through with it. And this season, I think a top 12 finish would be a good sign of progress. Obviously, he came in during the season, got relegated, went straight back up. Well done to them for that. And then, obviously, stay up last year was always the aim. Next season, push on. And the third season should be a fight for the top 10 towards the top six. Um, so, Bristol Air was top 12. Burton, top 10. I think they're only six points off at the end of last season. And Burton were one of the better teams from February onwards. Um, Dina Manria did a very, very good job. Um, one of the best managers, managers in the league last season. So for me, Burton should be pushed on for top for top 10. They signed really well, including Morecambe star Cole Stockton. Carlisle United. They've just come up. They've, they've recruited really well. They've signed a lot of players. You know, Ben Barkley's come back. 
Alvin McCormick's come in, um, again, was on loan last year. Sam Lavelle is a very good piece of business. Um, obviously, they've lost one or two. They've kept the manager, and there's going to be a feel-good factor. I feel I'm having a, like a season similar to Port Vale, who won the playoffs the previous year. Carlisle won it this year. I think Carlisle's aim will be just avoid relegation. Anything else, 50-plus points, 55-plus points, is a bonus. Cheltenham, I really do think it is stay up. They have lost Alfie May, but they've still got Aidan Keener, who's a very good player. Obviously, you know, they lost Boyle quite some time ago as well. Um, you know, they lost Wright last year, did okay. They lost Duff last year, did okay. So this just shows you that, you know, I do think there are in safe hands. Um, but for me, I do think staying up next season is the aim because I think the strength at the bottom has slightly improved a bit. Derby County, top two. Derby County should not be scraping into the playoffs. Derby County are a big football club. They have recruited very well. Look, I do think they're a bit light in the forward area, but their defence, their back five, back six, you know, kind of with the wing backs and the, the defenders they've been brought in. They brought, you know, you look at the quality, you know, Cash in at the back. He's a very, very good, you know, good player. And the players they've added as well, it's it, it's just fantastic as well. And they're, they're starting to bring players to fit a Paul Warren system. I like Washington up front. I don't think he'll score many um, or as many as David McGoldrick did last year because McGoldrick was, you know, high 20s towards the end. I know he scored penalties, but he was still a workhorse and did well for the team. Um, I do think if they can keep, you know, the likes of Conor Horihan, uh, those types of players as well. Um, and they're starting to bring the age game uh, down a, a bit as well. Obviously, Curtis Davis left the football club. Um, so, I do think Derby County will be okay next year, but top two should be their aim. Cambridge United. Now, a difficult window for them, um, but they brought in a few decent players. Look, it's always going to be hard when you've lost Nibs, you've lost Smith. Two players that were influential towards your bid for survival, but Mark Bond is still there. Did a good job at the end of last year. The faith in him did, you know, ultimately pay off. For me, avoid relegation again. I think the candidates for the drop um, are they in my bottom four. You'll have to watch my predictions video very, very soon for, to find out. Um, but I think, again, clubs like this, they got, you know, who struggled last year. They brought Danny Andrew in from Fleet, which is a good replacement. But again, I think avoid relegation is the right aim for them this season. Charlton now. Now, for me, Charlton... Their aim should be to get into the top six. They've had a good window. Look, they've lost Raksaki, who was in a low. But the quality they have brought in in the whole squad, when you look at it, they've improved it tenfold. Kamara has come in. All of a sudden, then, you've got a midfielder of ilk. Alfie May is a goal scorer. 0.58 goals slash assists per game last season in League uh, League One. So again, he knows where the net is. But these players have come to Charlton before and not delivered. So for me, top six should be the aim. A big step up from uh, 10th last year. Exeter City. It should be stay up first, get to 50 points. Because obviously, first season they did well. Normally you do all right in your first season. In the second season you tail off a little bit. Gary Colwell did okay. I think pressure will be on him this year. I think if you don't get off to a good start, I think pressure will be mounting. I think he came in at a reasonable time where Exeter were, were quite comfortable in the league. They weren't struggling. So he, he could kind of just see it over till the end of the season. Um, although he did come in in kind of the end of October. And then I think if you do say up, he's 50, 50 plus points again. Because I think that is realistic for Exeter City. Fleetwood Town, top 12. My club... We finished 13th last year, just outside the top 12, which was disappointing. But again, recruitment has been good. Um, you, you, you look at, you know, your Danny Mayers, who's coming to the football club. He's a very good player. You've seen it with, you know, Plymouth Argyle. Um, you brought Adam Montgomery in at, at left back as well. And it looks it looks a really good team now. We've, we've recruited well. I still think we need another striker to add to Jack Marriott and Jaden Stockley. But Fleetwood Ames next season should be first off. You're always trying to look at staying up, but realistically, top 12. Next up, Leighton Orient, stay up. They've just come up from League Two. It's easy to kind of look at the highs, but I do think Leighton Orient will stay up quite comfortably um, at this moment in time. I really like the signings of Ethan Galbraith. I think he's fantastic. Obviously, they've lost the goalkeeper. They lost the main man, um, Smythe, up front as well. Vigoury, uh, you know, in goal's gone to Burnley. Uh, but Orient, I like Richie Wellens. He's a good manager. Did well at Oldham. 
didn't really get a chance at Salford, but done very well at Leighton Orient. And again, you can see that he, he does well in League Two, doesn't he, Richie Wellens? And there's no wonder why there's a lot of clubs sniffing after him towards the end of last season. They didn't really have the stars of League Two last year, but they had all the gems. And that's the best thing to have. So Orient, for me, stay up, 50 plus points, and then you, you, you're smashing it. Great season. Lincoln City, top 10. They finished 11th last season. It was just outside on goal difference. Charlton picked them to it. But they signed really well. Come on, the main man, Tyler Walker. He is a star. Um, I think he scored 17 goals for them in the, um, in the first kind of part of the season for them. And then he went back to... Um, Nottingham Forest, you know, I, I like the, uh, you know, the Rico Hackett signing. I think that's a very good signing as well. Um, you know, Jensen in goals is a man mountain. So for me, Lincoln City should be pushing for the top 10. Again, that'll be a huge sign of their positivity under Mark Kennedy. Northampton Town, stay up. Again, they come up. When you always come up to a new league, you just want to kind of stay there. Unless you're like a Wrexham or a Salford or you've got money to pump in um, at, you know, a reasonable amount towards the level that you're at. Northampton, again, they've been flowing towards League 1 and League 2 for the last few years now. I do think staying there will be a, a sign of progress. And especially what they've been through in the last few years. It's been really tough. You know, you look at the Bristol Rovers situation where, you know, they absolutely hammered Scunthorpe and they missed out on goal difference. You look at, you know, they were poor in the playoffs. They, you know, reacted really well to that. So, again, staying up in League One will be a huge, huge achievement. Oxford, top eight. Of course, they'd like to be in the top six. With the signings of Thornley, with the signings of Ruben Rodriguez, these are excellent signings um, and just, you know, a couple of what they've added to the squad. But also you've got to remember where they finished last year and you've got to be realistic that they might not go straight back up yet or straight back up to challenging for the top six. Liam Manning's got a full season now and he can actually implement the way he wants to play a passing game, a pressing game, you know, scoring lots of goals as well and being dominant, having having lots of the ball because at MK Don, he was having 70% of possession most games as well. So, Oxford will do that, I believe, but top eight should be their aim. Obviously, top six will be on the minds. Peterborough, the same. Top eight, challenge for the playoffs. Um, I do think Peterborough are a tiny bit short at the moment. They've obviously lost Ward, Norburn, um, you know, Norwich in goal, but we knew that was going to happen. Um, but again, they've had a, a decent window. This Clark Harris is still there. For now, but I think if he goes, they'll replace him well as well. Jack Taylor is obviously a big loss as well, but they replace him um, again, which, you know, he's a good piece of business for, for the posh. But to Vale, now, a couple of weeks ago, I was hammering them on here saying, I don't think they're quite ready um, for League One next season. I think that they're going to struggle. I think they'll probably finish in the bottom four. I'm not thinking that as much anymore. I really like the signing of Connor Ripley. I think he's a very, very good goalkeeper. They are in talk to sign, re-sign James Wilson, who was on trial at Fleetwood earlier this month. He's gone over to their pre-season tour over in Spain. Um, and again, they, they, they seem to have a, a solid squad all over now. But I do think the manager's situation is, is going to be a bit... Bit of a risky one, but for Port Vale, I think stay up next season will be a good season again. Two years in League One, staying up both years on a limited budget this year because the bu the budget was bigger last year to, to stay in this league. You've got to cut it again to go again next season as well. Port Vale, I do think will be OK, but staying up should be their aim. Portsmouth, top two. Again, you've got 17,000, 18,000 supporters, which most clubs in this league don't have. There's only a few this year that will, will have that backing. You know, you're looking at your Boltons, your Derbys, your Portsmouths. Um, uh, you know, they, they are going to be the 12th man for those football clubs. The signings have been unbelievable. Anthony Scully, very good signing. Regan Poole, Norris in goal, Kamara on loan. The, that's just you know, three or four I've mentioned there um, that are very good signs. And you're adding it to the likes of Colby Bishop. It's like, give the other teams a chance, Portsmouth. And they've won the window so far for me. Sean Essie is a, is a smart sign as well. He'll play um, a lot of minutes for them, I, I, I believe, as well. So Portsmouth have looked at the weakness of, you know, the defence needed sorting in. They're sorting that now. And also they've got goals up front. Um, Sayedi as well as a backup to Colby Bishop, nice piece of business, top two for Portsmouth Football Club.
Reading, it's a really weird one because they've got ownership issues. They brought, you know, a new manager in, in uh, Ruben Sellers. And again, they, they, they've been talked about, you know, that they're entering administration, you know, the, the ownership issues haven't been sorted. And you kind of think, well, can Reading start the season? Will Reading get a points deduction? Will they get a fine? Will they be able to bring in some players? Look, they brought, you know, a couple of players in. Nibs is a very good signing. Sam Smith is a very good signing, both from Cambridge, but both was very vital towards Cambridge staying up in League One last year. Sam Smith, it was seven goals in 11 last year. He scored six in six um, towards the end of the season. And those six goals, were there were some big goals in there. The one against you know, Fleetwood, Aquinton, Stanley. Um, you know, he scored away at Port Vale as well. These are goals that kept put, you know, Cambridge in the league as well. So um, I do think the good signs. I think top 10, top 12 at this moment in time. And if he can add to the squad, maybe push on. But it's going to be an interesting season for Reading, most definitely. It's be town now. Again, since she's be entered League One, the, you know, they're the second longest serving club in League One, just behind Fleetwood. They've never, ever not passed 50 plus points. Bar the season, uh, the season entered about 12 games early due to the COVID pandemic. But however, on points per game, they're on about 55 points. They've got 50 points a couple of times, but they always are around about 50 to 60, 65 points. Bar the season where they got 80 odd points and missed out on top two and then lost to Rotherham due to a Richard Wood brace in the playoff final in the 2017-2018 League One season. So for me, Shrewsbury again should be aiming for 50 plus points. I like what they've done. They've signed, um, you know, they've signed well, um, in my in my opinion. They've obviously lost, you know, Pennington as well at the back, which is a big loss as well. Cottrell even, I think, is a big loss. Matty Taylor, I don't think, is as good as Cottrell. But it's going to be interesting to see how Shrewsbury adapt because the last time, obviously, they went through a big managerial change. Um, you know, Ricketts came in and it didn't work out. So for Shrewsbury, it's huge. Um, but 50 plus points. Stevenage. Now, the way they sign players, they should be finishing way above the drop. But because they've just come up, they're new to the league. They just stayed up in the league two, 12 months ago. It's staying up. That is all that matters. They signed very well. They signed, you know, you know, Nathan Thompson, you know, Ben Thompson, Louis Thompson, a team full of Thompsons. Uh, Force Fork Kaskis got a new deal as well. Steve Evans is still at the football club as well. Harry Anderson's coming. These are, are good players at League One level that have played a lot of times at League One level as well. So they've got the squad there. But for me, just stay up this year. Anything else is a bonus. It's the same for all the clubs that came up last season. Wickham, top 10. Now, they've started to sign very well. Luke Lee, he is a very good signing. And again, a loss for Shrewsbury. He scored, um, you know, I think it was 21 times in 100 and 101 uh, games for Shrewsbury. And this is a player that used to be a left wing back for Bristol Rovers. He moved into central midfield um, now as well. Um, and again, they've kept... They've kept a core of the team, which I like. Matt Bloomfield starting to identify the players that he wants to play a passing game. I thought they were, that was an issue towards the end of last season. But for me, Wickham will be challenging for top 10 next season. Wigan, an eight-point deduction. It's cold in Wigan right now at minus eight. But for me, Wigan have got a very good team. I know Will Keane's left the football club, but they still... You know, they've still got a very good team. Jason Kerr is apparently coming back as well. Um, Callum Lang, very good player um, as well. He's, he, he's turned into a Wigan legend down there. Sean Maloney did a very good job in difficult circumstances um, last season, in my opinion, as well. So, um, you know, they just signed Sean Clare as well, who was their number one, side, uh, number one target. So, for me, if Wigan can get towards the top 12, that'd be a brilliant and ambitious aim. But I think, again, staying up at first will be a huge ask. Um, I do think they'll do it. But if they can push on for top 12, I think that would be a very good season for Wigan Athletic. Because you're thinking, normally you need 63 points to get into the, into top 12. You're probably going to have to average playoff points just to get to top 12 this year. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Did you enjoy it? Let me know your team, who you support. What are your aims for the season and where you think you'll finish? And if you do think you're going to finish outside of your aim, 
What do you need? Do you need a central midfielder? Do you need a centre half? Do you need a striker? Let me know down in the comment section below. Please like, subscribe. Lots more League One content coming your way. Videos, live streams, Fleetwood vlogs, and League One vlogs as well from different match day um, experiences and also ground tops next season as well. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I will see you later. Up the Skybet League One.